Hello and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to look at a plethora of examples of multiplying radical expressions, specifically the products of two termed expressions. And we just want to keep in mind that when we combine radicals, um, frequently what we're going to see here is we're going to have to multiply the square root of x times the square root of x. And it's just really handy to know this is the same thing as the square root of x squared, which just equals x, assuming x is um, bigger than 0 or equal to 0. So just good to know that when we see this, this is the same as x because it's combining the two radicands, making x squared, and then it just becomes x. All right, so we want to keep that in mind as we look at our first example. So in all of these examples, we're looking at multiplying something with two terms. So here we have two terms by something else with two terms. When we do this, we might use what's called the FOIL property or the distributive property to help us with this multiplication. We take each term from the first factor and multiply it to each term of the second factor. So we're going to start with our 8 radical 7. We're going to multiply 8 radical 7 by radical 7. And remember what I just said, when we multiply radical 7 by radical 7, this is just going to be a regular 7, a rational 7. And then we can multiply 8 times 7 is 56. There's that weird screen. Oh, we'll go down there. Great. Okay, when we distribute 8 radical 7 to the second term, we multiply the numbers that are the, the coefficients, the numbers in front, 8 times 3 is 24. And then we're going to multiply the two radicands, 7 times 5, and we just want to make sure that they don't have any common factors, and they don't. So we're going to say plus 35. And there's no simplifying there, so I can just move this down with my 56 plus 35. Okay, we've successfully distributed the 8 radical 7. Now we're going to distribute the negative radical 5. Negative radical 5 times positive radical 7. I'm just going to bring it right down here. It's going to be minus radical 35. And then minus root 5 plus uh, times positive 3 root 5. So this is going to give us, I'm going to write this one up here. That's going to give us negative 3 root 5 root 5. So we have two radical 5s which will become regular 5, and then negative 3 times 5 is 15. Now we want to combine like terms. We have a constant 56 and a constant negative 15, so that's going to give us 41 when we combine those. Then we have 24 radical 35 and negative radical 35, so we're taking away one of the root 35s from the 24 we had here. That's going to leave us with 23 times the square root of 35, and this would be our final product. Our next example, this would be a two-termed factor squared. We might know the shortcut of the binomial square, which says if we have x minus y quantity squared, we can multiply this by squaring the first term, subtracting the product of the two terms, and adding the second term squared. If you don't know that, you can, of course, expand. You just want to make sure you don't distribute an exponent over subtraction because that's not a property that exists. So either you know this formula, or you would just write it x minus y squared is the same as x minus y times x minus y. Um, so those are your two options. You can expand it and then do the distributive property from here, or we can just use the shortcut. We're going to go ahead and just use the shortcut and make our lives simpler. So it's going to be the first term squared. The square root of x squared is x. Um, then we have minus 2xy, so minus, then we multiply these two terms together and double it. That's going to give us minus 8 radical x. And then the second term squared, negative 4 quantity squared, is 16. We have no like terms, so this is our final product. Our next example, we're looking at uh, an index of 3, so a little bit different. So I'm going to distribute this cubed root of 2 to the two terms that I see when I multiply these two terms. That 4 stays out in front, so it's going to be 4 times the cubed root of the two radicands. 2 times 20 is 40. Minus, and this 3 is going to just chill in front because there's no other coefficients. And this will be the cubed root of 2 times 4 is 8. Now what we're looking for under the radical are perfect cube factors. 40 has a perfect cube factor of 8. It could be the cubed root of 8 times the cubed root of 5. And then the cubed root of 8 is equal to 2. So now we have a regular 4 and a regular 2, which is going to be 8 times the cubed root of 5. Here we have 3 times the cubed root of 8. Well, the cubed root of 8 is 2, so that would just be 3 times 2 minus 6. Uh, you could put a, radic you know, a cubed root of 1 if you wanted to, but the cubed root of 1 is just 1, so that would just kind of disappear. 
And we can't combine these because one has a radical and one doesn't, so this would be our final product. In this example, we're going to use the distributive property again. So the square root of w times the square root of w will be w. The square root of w times negative 9 will be minus 9 radical w. It's really tempting there. We see radicals. We see a perfect square such as 9, and we're like, ooh, 3. Don't put 3, though, because that's not. there's no square root being taken of 9. That's a regular 9 being multiplied to something that happens to have a radical. But those two things don't overlap, so the 9 just becomes the coefficient. Now we're going to distribute the negative 2. That'll give us negative 2 radical w. And then negative 2 times negative 9 will be positive 18. We do have like terms to combine. We have minus 9 square root of w minus 2 square root of w. So we have w minus 11 root w plus 18. And that's going to be our final product here. Our next example, we see another binomial square. Actually, this isn't a binomial, but we see another two-term thing squared. So again, if we have x minus y quantity squared, we can say that it's x squared minus 2 times x times y plus y squared. So the first term squared, the square root of 6 quantity squared is 6, minus the two terms doubled, so that will be minus 4 root 18, and then plus the second term squared. We want to be careful about squaring the second term, so negative 2 root 3 squared. Squaring a negative will turn it positive, so that's where the plus sign comes from. Then it's 2 squared, which is 4, and the square root of 3 squared, which is just 3. So we want to be careful there. The, the coefficient gets squared. Meanwhile, the square simply cancels with the square root, leaving us with just a regular 3. And 4 times 3 is 12. So this would become 12. Now we can combine 6 plus 12 is 18. And then we want to be careful with this root 18, because root 18 does have a perfect square factor of 9. So root 18 can be rewritten as the square root of 9 times the square root of 2. 9, the square root of 9 is 3, so this becomes minus 4 times 3 minus 12 root 2. So this ends up becoming our final product here. So we have to be really careful about this. We want to combine like terms. We want to make sure that all radicands are simplified as much as they can be. Our next example, it looks a little scary, but this is still two terms being multiplied by two terms. The first term just happens to have a radical that, uh, radicand that's a binomial. So we're going to distribute this square root of y plus 2. The square root of y plus 2 times the square root of y plus 2, well, that's the square root of y plus 2 quantity squared, which will be y plus 2. And we're going to make the assumption here that all variables are non-negative. Then we're going to distribute the square root to 7. That will be plus 7 times the square root of y plus 2. Then we're going to distribute the minus 7. That will be minus 7 times the square root of y plus 2. And minus 7 times positive 7 will be minus 49. We do have a few like terms here. We have the 2 and the minus 49. So we're going to have y minus 47. And then, um, oh look, look what happens here. So we have 7 root y plus 2 and minus 7 root y plus 2. Those end up canceling each other out, leaving us with y minus 47. And what's interesting here is you notice that the final answer doesn't contain a radical. This is the first one. If we look back, there's a radical, there's a radical, there's a radical, there's a radical, there's a radical. I think that was the first one. Uh, this one, the reason we actually lost the radical is because these two factors have a special relationship with each other. These two factors are called conjugates. Conjugates are when we have the same conjugates, conjugates, uh, conju. That's not spelled right. Con Close enough. Um, the conjugates are when we have the same two terms but with opposite sign between them. So a plus b and a minus b are conjugates of each other. Conju not, I think I switched the g and the j. It's really bothering me, clearly. That looks better. Okay, let's try that again. Get rid of that. Conjugates, great. And so we see here we have the same first term and we have additive opposite second terms. So when we see conjugates and they're being multiplied, the radicals are going to cancel out, which is kind of a great property, especially if you're getting into looking at division of radical expressions. You're really going to want to know about the conjugates there. Okay. Uh-oh, it looks like we have conjugates again. The first terms are the same, the second terms are the same, but the signs between them are different. So hopefully I didn't just lie to you, and hopefully we don't end up with any radicals here.
Let's see, the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is 3. The square root of 3 times the square root of x is going to be the square root of 3x. Minus root x times root 3 will be minus the square root of 3x. And then minus root x plus root x, that'll be minus this times this, will give us just regular x. Yes, these do end up canceling, leaving us with 3 minus x. And I think this is our last example. It is. We see another binomial square. This one is the first one we've seen with a plus sign. So with the plus sign, x plus y squared is going to be x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. So that's the first term squared. So this thing squared will be just x minus 1 plus the product of the two roots doubled. So that's going to be 2 times 5 is 10 times the square root of x minus 1 plus the second root squared will be 25. I do see like terms. We have a minus 1 and a plus 25. Once that x minus 1 is out of the radicand and, it, and it's, it's a free expression, whatever you want to call it, they're separate terms. So x is its own and minus 1 is its own. They're no longer connected at the hip. So we are able to combine the minus 1 with the 25. We're going to have x plus 10 times radical x minus 1, and that would be plus 24. And that would be our final answer.